I'm 12 years old. And while I am just like you, a regular kid, I also have a dream. A dream to become one of the world's leading experts in reptiles. How am I going to get there? By exploring everywhere I can in search of amazing and incredible animals. I want to teach you about all the cool and exotic creatures on our Earth. You might not be an expert yet, but after watching this Scaly Adventures episode, you will have even more knowledge about God's incredible and awesome animals. Today, on my quest for exceptional animals, I have traveled to a swamp in the mountainous area of South Carolina to search for some wild animals. As I row my canoe deeper into the swamp, I can feel something is watching me, and I'm going to find it. Can you feel that too? Say, do you want to help me find it? If so, grab your adventure hat, Lace up your boots and grab your critter net because you're about to join me on one of my amazing scaly adventures. So who am I? I'm Pierce Curran and I live on the wild side. <laughs> Time to get dirty. I knew I'd find one like this. I knew it, yes! Just a place to find one of those little critters. Yeah. Whoa! Oh man, this is amazing. Okay, so this is just perfect for a snake because to you it looks like a hollowed out tree. But <laughs> to a snake, this is a Taj Mahal with every thing in it. It's got all the cool extras. Like it's very very tall so that like a climbing snake can slither up it. It's got plenty of bugs which attract rodents which is plenty of food. And it's got it's safe from predators. It's dark and damp. It's perfect for our little slithery friends. Now I'm gonna try and catch me a snake. Oh, yes! Oh, ho, 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 ho. yeah! I knew I'd find something. Oh, we caught a sweetie here. Now, she is a very beautiful snake. She is a yellow rat snake. One cool thing about her is that you see these black lines? Each yellow rat snake has four of them that go down the whole body and they never break. That is really, really cool about these guys. Man, she's really hyperactive. Now, also what's cool is that her scientific name is Cholognathus flevolani... Flevolanith... Flevolanith... <laughs> ah, whatever. Just what it says down there. You know, right, right there. Okay, the producer can put that in. <laughs> okay, also what's cool about her is that their babies look extremely different than the adults. What are you doing, sweetie? <laughs> oh, you're too cute. I am not a tree, though. I am not a tree. I know you love to climb trees because that's in your species, the rat snakes. Now, as you can see, she's just a sweetie. Oh my gosh, I just want to hug you. Oh. Now, that's because she's a rat snake, and rat snakes are very docile. They are typically docile, not all the time. Now, they are just very sweet, and they are great starter pets. They are great snakes to have if you want to get started with having snakes. Now, I'm going to take this snake to see my friend Nigel at Safe Haven and Educational Adventures. I know a lot about snakes, but he knows everything about snakes. He has all kinds of animals here at his exotic animal rescue center. There are parrots, monkeys, alligators, spiders, turtles, and all kinds of my favorites, 
snakes, both venomous and non-venomous. This is going to be great and will teach me so much more about this cool snake. So, let's go meet Nigel. Hey Nigel, I brought something for you to check out for me. Well, good morning Piss. I'm just actually preparing something for you. Awesome. Well, you said you needed a couple of heat lamps, so I'm sorting you a couple out. Awesome, thanks. And what have you got here? Well, I found this beautiful yellow rat snake down in the swamps, and I was hoping you could check her out for me. You found this snake in the swamps? Yeah, I know, right? That's kind of weird. In, in the upstate of South Carolina? Yeah. That is strange, because they're not actually native to this area. Really? You know where they're native from? Florida. And? North Carolina. Parts of North Carolina? Yes. You don't really find them in the upstate of South Carolina. Um, and your identification is correct. It is a yellow rat snake. Awesome. Now I'm going to test you. Oh boy. <laughs> Do you know the specific name or scientific name? I know it's Pantherophis and Quad. Yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> hey, that's, that's a great effort. It's Pantherophis obsoleta quadrivitata. Okay. Okay, so let's break that down. What does quad mean? Quad means four. Four, as in quad bike with four wheels. Yes. Okay, vitata? Means lines. Okay, and what's the significant thing about a yellow rat snake's lines? Other than their color, the four bands that go all the way down the body and never break. You've been doing your homework. Oh, yes. I'm impressed, all right. And you found this in the swamp, well, you know, I'm glad you brought it in because, as I say, this isn't native. And so this is probably, or was, someone's pet that has either been released or has escaped. Now, yes, it would probably survive up here, but it's not good for, for the, the environment. Absolutely, because, you know, we better check what sex it is because these are capable of breeding with black rat snakes. Producing so, another hybrid species. Right, and that wouldn't be good for the, the actual species specific. Okay, let's just have a quick look. Have you sexed it yet? No, I just took a guess. Okay, you got a 50-50 chance of getting it right. What did you guess? I guessed female. Did you indeed? Yes. Hmm. <laughs> Should we probe it and check? Probably. Okay, just bear with me. Uh, I actually had my probes here this morning somewhere because I was probing another snake. Uh, let me find them in my mess. Haha. Let's see. Okay. Ready? Let's have a look. Well, a little lubricant on it. You might not like this, but no, they they don't tend to like this gender. too much. Okay, let's see. So, the scales, you know this is the cloacal scale here? Yes. And then, what are these called? They're divided scales. And they're called the? Subcaudal? You're close again, you're doing your homework. It's subcaudals. Oh, okay. Okay, now, when it sheds, you can count those. And in fact, this being an adult snake, you could probably count them now. And there's various ranges that okay. you, Number of subcaudal scales will indicate male or female. The only problem is if you get one mid range. Ooh. So, by probing it, we'll have a definitive. So, we have to go up under the cloacal scale and then I twist very gently. See, it's going to pull, it's not going to like it. Then you have to do it very gently. I don't really blame it. No. <laughs> okay, and we're in what they call the pocket. There's a pocket each side. Okay. Okay, and that's not going anymore. So I'm pushing it up slightly. One, two, three, four subcaudal scales. What did you say it was? I thought it was a female, but okay. I wasn't sure. Okay, well that's one side. Let's try the other pocket just to be okay. sure. Okay. Okay, so we're going to go into the other pocket. I have to tip it slightly this way under the subcaudal scale and then in and you see how I'm twisting it very gently I'm not forcing it 
I'm just doing it gently. So the process is you slide in, go up, and you, then down. Right. You're going up under the cloacal scale, and then they have the two pockets. I'm going into the pocket, and then I do it very gently. See how I'm rotating it? By that, I'm putting a little pressure going down towards the base of the tail. Okay. But I'm not forcing it. And lo and behold, this pocket's gone to three scales. Okay. So, I would say, your guesstimation, young man, 100% right. Yeah. Female. Awesome. I got lucky. <laughs> I gotta say, you had a 50 50 chance. Oh, well, yeah, that's probably good. But <laughs> that's good. So, um, I hope you're not going to go and return this to the swamp. No, because that would be bad for the ecosystem. Right, absolutely. Um, I mean, it seems a pretty docile snake, which means, you know, you might want to just keep an eye on it and make sure it hasn't got any external parasites. Um, don't put it near your collection for about 30 days. Monitor it, try and feed it. And then, you know, I would add it to your collection. Awesome, that's great. That's a great find. We'll be right back, but first, what do yellow rat snakes typically eat? A, plants, B, tacos, C, rodents, or D, berries? We're back. What do yellow rat snakes typically eat? The answer is C, rodents. If you guess C, you're correct. So Pierce, this is the, uh, the form that you've been working on. Yes, and I wanted to show it to you. So like, uh, you have the animal's name, the number of sheets, like uh, this is sheet number one, number two, uh, the date of feeding, the diet fed, the amount consumed, and if they regurgitated it. And then you have the medical area here, like shedding, uh, how active and alert they are, if there are parasites, and uh, mating and pregnancy stuff. And then you have the habitat, date of last cleaning, uh, to make sure that there wasn't anything bad in their cage. And then this is extra stuff if you want to say, like, you know, make sure to feed him on Sunday, or, you know, clean out cage on Friday. So, that's it. Right, uh, this is excellent. Um, I, I really like your observation notes and your action plan because, you know, even if you're not available, maybe mum or dad can do it. Yeah. And you can leave them a note saying, please clean on, on Sunday morning before you have your breakfast. Yeah. And that's the great thing about this sheet. It allows different animals, like if you uh, had like a dog, you could fill out the same thing, just, you know, not do the shedding. Well, dog shed, but not in the same way. <laughs> and this will be available on my website, too, so that anybody can download this so they can learn how to take care of their animals responsibly. Right. I, I think this is absolutely superb. Oh, um, and you're right. This could be adapted for any, any pet that you had. I mean, obviously, you might not want to have the habitat if it was a dog or a cat because well, yeah. that would be your front room. Or, yeah. You know, <laughs> your backyard. The, there's one thing on there, particularly with pertaining to the medical that um, is quite important that you might want to add. What is it? Well, if you take your animal to the vet, the first thing the vet is going to ask you is, how much does it weigh? Ooh, yeah, that's a really good one. Right, because any animal that's treated by a vet is weighed because they have to know the weight for the medications. Okay. If, if it needs them. So the only thing I could find on there, you've done a superb job, is that I would add a small column and add the weight. I mean, you might want to delete the pregnant column because okay. that, that could be an observation. Okay. I mean, you know, pregnancy with, with reptiles, most of them once, some of the, you know, corn snakes, rat snakes, you might get twice a year, king snakes twice a year. Okay. So it's not that important. That was important. Okay. Well, that's awesome. Thanks for checking it out. We'll be right back. But first, which fact is not important to know about your pet? A weight, B, diet fed, C, favorite TV show, or D, last habitat cleaning. We're back. Which fact is not important to know about your pet? The answer is C. If you answered C, you're correct. So Pierce, you brought me one of your new young ladies. Yes. Now I'm going to show you one of my young ladies. She's a little bigger. Oh boy. I think you'll like her. Oh, I 
This is a female. You can hold her. Wow. Yeah, don't, really don't pick her up. Actually, if we can rest her on the table, that'll be great because there's every possibility she's in the very early stages of pregnancy. Wow. Okay, Piers, so this is a female as well, but it's a, a little larger than your yellow rat snake. That's for sure. Do you know what it is? Telling by the patterns, I'm just going to go out on a limb and say Dumeril's Grombo. It's actually a Dumoulin's Rainbow from Madagascar. Yes. You've been reading your books. I always now, try. You see the pattern that this snake has? Yes. It's, it's lots of dappled browns. That is called cryptic camouflage. Hmm. Because it spends most of its time on the floor. And as you know, with boa constrictors, they're ambush predators. Yes. So it blends in really nicely with the dappled light of the forests. And dead leaves. And dead leaves. <laughs> and then when some poor unsuspecting rodent happens to walk past. Oh. <laughs> that's right, dinner served. Yep. <laughs> but as you can see, she's very well behaved. She sits here, she's quite quite placid. So Pierce, um, being a Dumeril's Madagascan ground bower, this is actually an endangered species. Oh no. Yeah, it's unfortunate that uh, deforestation in Madagascar and also over collection for the pet trade has resulted in numbers of this snake going downhill rapidly. Oh, that's too bad. Yes, well that's why we're here. We actually rescued this from a home that could no longer look after it because it had gotten too big. Oh. Well, I'm glad that you do that because this is a great thing to keep all these animals. Okay, well, I don't think this snake's too big for you, so would you like to put it back? Sure. Okay, it's all yours. Right, I'm going to grab the head okay. and mid-body. And if you just slide her back in there. There you go, girl. Put her head in and then just feed her in. She'll go in. Wow, I sure learned a lot today, and I hope you did too. You know, I want to thank Nigel, my friend and mentor at Safe Haven. And if you want to check him out, you can go to www.rescueexotics.org. It's a great website. But also, don't forget to check out Scaly Adventures. We'll have more episodes like this coming very soon.